a little bit early. So there we go. I hit that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Happy Hour podcast. Of course, I'm Ray. Matt's here with me. Tom Nutty will be joining us fairly shortly. Um, also, our special guest is Daisy Joplin. Um, you know, and dude, like we've been coming a little bit early, and I just I wanted to come on early before our regular broadcast because we were talking a lot about the VR stuff last week. And we actually, we played VR one, you know, once we got done with the podcast last week and we ended up with some video that I just want to share real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it ready right here on Facebook live, and then I'm going to hit share screen YouTube. So I'm sorry, right here on (laughs) YouTube live. I'm sorry. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit share on this. And then we are going to play the chaos that happened when we were playing bar fight. So right there, let me go ahead. (laughs) Hold on. There we go. There's so much fucking chaos. (laughs) And of course, this is us playing bar fight. You showed up and I was already on the plane. I was all alone. And that man, that (laughs) man over there just... (laughs) He started opening fire on people, <laughs> innocent people. Get out of here, you crazy maniac. You're crazy. <laughs> you look like a damn white supremacist. Get out of here. And of course, you can only hear Matt because we had it on party chat. So you couldn't hear anything I was saying. But yeah. So you see me pretending to clean the airplane. Like you're cleaning shit. I know you ain't cleaning shit. <laughs> I, mean, well, I, I meant to ask you, why were you so low? Like, I know you were high as shit, but why Why were you walking around like you were a midget? I don't know. He tried to touch me. I might have been sitting no. down. Really. No. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I hear people talking to me. Because I remember, like, I invited you and you came in. And I had already brutalized everybody there. Like, I remember we went in the bar. One of my favorite parts is when I threw the cash register at the guy's face. Which. No, because, like, usually the, the levels. There you go. Now I'm, like, standing up. Like, yeah, yeah. Now you're standing. There, Of course, there you see a glue gun. And, of course, if you guys have Oculus, you know, reach out to us on our social media pages. Make sure you find us. We'll play Oculus line. together. You know, we're going to try to show some of these, that, you know, a little bit before line. some of our episodes yeah. begin. You know, just kind of hang out. And what is it with our feet and shit? Like, and for some reason, really yeah, for some reason, we kept on having random tattoos too. Like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, like, our arms go out. Like, I wasn't at no point was I doing that with my arms. <laughs> well, I was. <laughs> oh, I like ghost mode right into the fucking bar. But I couldn't see that it was closed on my end. They shut me out. They took me out. Is us as close yeah like it's a, well, i don't know it's something about i i don't know i get a little high and i start playing my vr headset i mean it's, it's really the only way to do it yeah i'm sorry Just, oh we need to show the other video what we'll do is next week we'll show the other video when you're laying on the ground i'm pouring beer into your mouth and you're like feed me jesus feed me And you see me like I'm lighting fucking fireworks. Yeah. (laughs) 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 Meanwhile, you're like fighting everybody, and 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 I'm shooting. I'm still lighting up fireworks. (laughs) (laughs) It would have been great if you would have smacked him through the fucking window. Just. My favorite thing is just throwing people off the side of the building. Oh, shit. Oh, oh. If you do it right in the actual bar, you can pick somebody up and you can run them across oh, yeah. the bar. Yeah. Like, I've done it before. You can, like, hold them and run them and they knock everything off the fucking bar. <laughs> like, old school, like, fucking bar shit. So, and of course, in case anybody's not played this and you have an Oculus, it's called Drunken Bar Fight. Make sure you find it. They update it. Fairly often, and yeah, they yeah, just yeah. Uh, that airplane yeah. level was new. Yeah, the airport's new. Oh, 
there there was one level where I had uh they were trying to run on the elevator and I kept shooting it. Oh yeah, that's right. Look, I'm out. Oh, yeah, so right. you fucking you're dragging my body around. You're in midget mode again. I got you. <laughs> I got you, right? I got you. <laughs> <laughs> like you're, the, you're the worst like friend reviver ever it looks like you're beating me in the face of the bat i was protecting you okay <laughs> i'm surprised you didn't throw my body off the side of the fucking building i wonder if you could do that <laughs> Yes, yes, that's fucking right. You can't fuck with us. <laughs> no, hey, I got plans for that, bro. <laughs> There's the bro. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, you can knock people outside, threw the bride off, and then this is the best part the fucking helicopter shows up, and you're like, oh, okay, I got this. <laughs> I'm gonna throw a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> you want some of me? Let's fight. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. I just I get into this mode and I just start whipping ass. Start whooping that ass. And that's cool too. Like with that, it tells you like how many punches you threw, how many knockouts, bars conquered, yeah. all that shit. Huh. So I like you didn't know, like, because you're always toasted. You're had you're so baked when we play right. that you can pick up your cell phone and you can change your characters, you can put on God mode. Oh, really? Like, yeah, yeah, all kinds of shit. It's, so yeah. I, I didn't even know I had a phone. Yeah. <laughs> and in the other video, it's funny because we kept on holding each other's faces like this. Like you see me walk up and I hold your face and you're holding mine. And at one point you see my character slap yours and I just kind of go in like uh, and it, it didn't work. Oh. This is the one. Uh, I remember we went in there and there was a guy who looked like Kid Rock, and you got very upset at the guy who looked like Kid Rock. I mean, I in real life I like Kid Rock, but <laughs> he was just like I had to beat his ass because he was a poser. My character's just, what's going on here? <laughs> So for those of you seeing us live right now, this is just a little bit of bonus stuff we have until we actually physically start at 6.30. We're just kind of fucking off right now, right here on YouTube live. And then, uh, you know, we'll be starting our regular podcast. Tom Nutty will be joining us, our regular uh, co-host that's back after a couple of weeks. And Daisy Joplin will also be joining us, hopefully, because my regular link wasn't there and I had to send a new Zoom link. So hopefully she got the new Zoom link. That's the thing, like, every time I drink, I have to throw the bottle down, like, smash the bottle. Yeah. And there's not Tom Segura right there, admit. He's going to come on, and he's going to be like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> he's literally going to be like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, that was Kid Rock, the Kid Rock poser. Yeah. Well, I love this because he gets up. This is my favorite part. Like, you're holding him, and you're punching him in the face as you're holding him. And all of a sudden, here, here I come with a fucking cash register. Ah! What's up, buddy? I don't know. I just walked into, like, you guys virtually beating Chad Kroger's ass in a bar. <laughs> we're actually, we're kind of just fucking off a little bit and showing some of the video from our Oculus play last week. Oh, God. Uh, 630 rolls around. Like us in drunken bar fight on the Oculus. So this is this is the VR. Yeah, yeah, this is oh, the no VR shit. from Drunken Bar Fight. I like <laughs> fucking use the deer like a fucking bull. Like, like, like you're still like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just I can't get over how weird they walk. They walk yeah, like they, weird, like witches or whatever. Like I don't, I don't understand. Like they're yeah, like, like they like flew yeah. across. The floor. Yeah, like I feel like our characters should be wearing high heels, but they're not wearing high heels. So. Oh, I wish my audio would have worked. All this fucking chaos and fucking. <laughs> <laughs> what in the fuck? Tom, <laughs> so, um, later on, like, we don't have video available right now, 
but there was one where we were in the bar and Matt was laying on the ground. I was pouring beer in his mouth, like just over and over again. He's like, feed me, Jesus, feed me. And he was literally laying on the ground. So you see his character just laying on the fucking floor of the bar. And it's like, what the fuck? I was just oh, happy really right baked, now. By the way, like super baked. So. Dude, you're beyond fucking baked. Like beyond baked. That's not, like, I don't even know what the fuck that's considered. But now, so anyways, that's some of our, uh, some of our share from uh from last week um you know and tom of course man it's been it's been a little bit since uh, you've been able to join us of course you've been having your yeah. comedy shows and shit going on of course last saturday you had comedy mania that oh was, yeah and like that it was it your first comedy mania that you did yeah that was the first one i've done and i'm telling you it it there's nothing like it like yeah i don't i don't know how to explain it but it's <laughs> it's literally it's it's wrestling with comedy involved and it's it's such a weird combination but it it worked and it was one of the best probably one of my favorite shows i've been able to do since i started doing this nice nice and like now with that did they actually do like matches or anything like that too or they had they had uh certain people like justin slagle eric woodworth um there was a handful of people there that went through some shit it wasn't like a full match Okay, but, you know, the, and like uh, Rose Vine Shank, she won the the the, the ladies or uh, Candace Saunders won the ladies belt, but it was mixed in with like just people doing stand up. Gotcha. And it it was it was wild. It was yeah. wild. Well, it, it's funny because like I I was telling Eric Woodworth, I was like, dude, like because King McBride, like I I know mm-hmm. I've known Ryan since he walked into the the wrestling school, first time he's ever stepped into a ring. I was there when he did that. And, you know, it's the kind of thing that I told Eric, I was like, I would love to, you know, collab with those guys. And I would even come down and do stuff. And like, you know, my, my kind of thing is, is if I like, I, I would be the kind of guy that I would just want to be the heel and do that whole like fucking Andy Kaufman, like these comedians think they know what it's like to be in a ring or whatever, like do the whole, you know, just start wrecking people like, Hey, this is real. Like you guys are (laughs) whole, you know, and then, you know, that sets up for a whole thing where like, you know, Justin and Eric and like all those guys do comedy stuff and end up winning. And it's just kind of like, Oh, like, oh, what the fuck is this? Like, yeah. Well, so that, that, that's kind of the role uh, Ryan kind of is played that, there. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. Like Eric and Justin have like this rivalry going, blah, blah, blah. And then Ryan is like Justin's, you know, uh, equalizer. So when <laughs> Eric started talking shit, then Ryan comes out and fucks everybody up. It, I mean, it, it's a wild it's it's a wild experience yeah i mean it it looks it looks fun and actually like it's funny i think i may have actually worked in that ring at one time in my career because someone said it was old czw ring right i used to work in that ring either i would go down and train at czw which i would be training with guys like ryan mcbride adam cole you know guys like that in that ring or it was the ring that maven bentley used for his shows which I could have very well have worked Ryan in a long time ago in that very ring. So I don't know. It's like, it's crazy with stuff like that, that you don't know where your footprint has been. Like right. a ring travels around and it's like, you don't know, there could be a ring that I worked in at one point that may be being used in California right now. Right. And it's a ring that I worked in. Do I ever know that it's somewhere else? No. But I mean, that's just the whole footprint with it or whatever. And, you well, know, it's just it, it's fun, you know, I will say this. I will say this. And like, you know, we we've known each other long enough now. You know, I'm not the biggest wrestling fan in the world, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like it's just never been my thing. And I've never once stepped foot into a real wrestling ring. Oh, and so that was your first time ever being in a in like it, a ring. It was my first time really even being close to one, much less inside <laughs> of one. Yeah. And it might be the coolest feeling in the world. Oh, dude. <laughs> did you by any chance that they let you take a bump in the ring? That they offered it, and I was like, I have no idea how to do any of this, so I'm just gonna <laughs> tell jokes. Like, but but a lot of the people there did, and it, it's like it's. I never realized that that it wasn't as soft as I thought it was. I'll put oh, it to you that yeah. way. <laughs> See, here here's the thing. With, with that, I have had rings that I've worked in where there was either very little padding holes in the padding or the padding would fucking shift. I actually, I worked Rich Swan. It was early in Rich Swan's career. He was doing a character called El Negro Mysterio. It was the black Mysterio in Mexican. And I worked him on Mother's Day, I think in 2008. 
might have been 2009. And the ring that we were working in, they didn't tie the canvas down tight enough. So the, the padding kept sliding consistently. So we had to like readjust and the ropes were loose. Mm-hmm. So like the whole entire match, we just kept on beating stuff to each other. Like, hey, we can't do this off the ropes. We can't do this. Oh no, there's a gap right here. Hey, slam me over here. Because we had to work around all that shit. And by the third match, they finally figured it out. And, you know, got it rolling or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, man, and just the impact, like, as loud as that ring is, like, that's what draws people in. Like, that's a, that's another thing I never understood because I've never even been to a wrestling match, much less inside a ring or whatever. I did not realize how loud the slams were. Oh, yeah. Like, like the, the green room was in the ba- like in the basement behind it. And, like, I could hear when other people were up there taking bumps and shit. And I was like, what in the fuck is going on? Yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, like, that's the thing. You got to realize, like, you know, people always have the common misconception that with a wrestling ring, it's very padded. It's this much padding. This much padding on yeah. top of cross beams, metal cross beams, on top of other cross beams with a big steel metal frame with wood on top yep. of that. <laughs> and yes. that's what that padding is on yes. top of. And Perfect. what kind of breaks your fall a little bit is not really necessarily the padding, but the bounce of the ring. Like, it's not like a bounce like I'm a trap I'm surprised that it bounces, but, though. You like, know, that, 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 that also fucked me up when I got in it. I didn't expect it to move like it does. And I was like, this is the wildest shit. But, I, like, I was in the ring before the show, obviously, just, you know, fucking around with everybody. But when, like, the show started and we all got our entrance music and we, like, we all, everybody came out like wrestlers. It was, yeah. it was crazy. And, like, getting in the ring, it was one of the coolest fucking things I've, oh, I've done. Like, yeah. I, I mean, that, that's the thing. And what's fun, too, is, like, with that, you know, you don't know what to expect. And what, what, when, whenever I would train guys, like, the guys would kind of get the bumps down. You know what really fucks people up? Running, running the, the ropes. ropes. Because <laughs> running the ropes is such yeah. three steps this way, pivot, L your feet, boom, grab, go you know people cannot grasp that and i used to always do it where i would do it slow and then you know boom and then be like all right do it and that would just fuck people up so bad but i got to the point where i hit the ropes so fast i don't know if you remember i kind of hit them like the rock like i hit them hard like kind of like how he does because i just got used to that but yeah Yeah, i mean those ropes are fucking hard too i couldn't bounce off of those yeah you know, I, it, when I first time I got in a ring, I thought, oh, yeah, you just bounce off those. <laughs> oh, no. Do you know what, <laughs> you the, can't. <laughs> you know what the ropes are? The ropes are cable. And yeah, then what people right. do is the cable. The cable has like a really thin like layer of like kind of like, I guess, like rubber over it. Mm-hmm. And then what some people do is they take a foam pipe covering like that right. you would put over a copper pipe. And they yeah. put that over that. And then they tape all the way around. Yeah. And then the padding just gets thicker because you just keep on adding tape as the tape gets you know, yeah. worn down over like the years. I, I think when like, I was in the ring with you at, uh, I think it was the Dundalk yeah. school, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. When I tried bounce all the ropes, just fucking around, I, I think I like oh, got yeah. whiplash. Yeah. I'm doing that. <laughs> like, oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. It's funny because when I got there, that was the one thing I was like, yeah, I'll be able to do that. That's not, oh, you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah, like right. literally, literally, bounce literally like, oh. Right, like oh, uh, yeah. J- Justin and uh, Eric both were like, that's not where you really want to start. You know what I mean? And I was like, you know what? You're right. I'm not going to do any fucking thing. Yeah. I'm just going to enjoy the moment. But yeah, that's what everybody said the same thing about the ropes. Like it's way harder than it looks like, you know? Yeah, you, you really want like a big mind fuck. Like it looked like that Mc- that King Mc- was King McBride the only like worker worker? Like, yes, like actually- yeah. But what, what really fucks your mind is like let's say if it's kind of thing where it was king mcbride and like greg excellence or if somehow i start coming down it's me and king like watching us like do our like kind of practice around in the ring and actually like make that shit like like boom 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 boom. people sit there and be like what the fuck like we had mickey and Chella come up to learn some bumps and all that for stuff he was going to do in mcw and mcw didn't have the school at the time and i think mcbride actually was there that night it was like me mcbride <laughs> newey a couple of other guys and we were just fucking going at it in the ring. And I remember Mickey going, 
you guys are fucking amazing. He's like, you know, I, he's like, I'm down here as a spectator. And he's like, I'm just learning how to take bumps for like some little fucking chin dig <laughs> joke shit. He's like, but you fucking guys like, and I mean, that's the thing. And you know, you got to understand we do that stuff. And it's like, that's after like doing exercises beforehand, doing roles beforehand, oh, yeah. doing this, doing that. And then it's like, okay, let's get in the ring and now let's wrestle. Like well, now let's do that. And it's like, Jesus Christ. That, that, that's the one thing. My, my biggest takeaway is like everybody was fucking around in the ring and like, Eric and Justin, they know what they know about it. But then when you see somebody like uh, Brian McBride get in there, it's like watching somebody play an instrument. Oh, yeah. Like, he knows how to make the ring. I mean, not not taking anything away from him, but he knows how to make the ring like a, a – I don't know how to explain it, but, like, well, he knows pretty, how to I'll, use it. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it like this. is pretty much the ring is your stage. That's, that's right. the whole thing. You know, we were, we were trained a long time ago – of and ryan might have been at this training thing with me too i'm not sure if al snow said it or if les stature said it is that when people come to a wrestling show they're looking at the ring so do your shit in the ring right. you know once you start going around the ring and all that stuff like people don't pay attention as much but people are looking at that ring when that ring makes the sound when that ring does this when that ring does that people hear that and they're looking towards that that is your stage you know you do everything in the middle of that ring and it's weird because like a lot of people just like the whole thing you do everything in the middle and right. as a wrestler you're trained like how to work up and you always work yourself back to the middle of that ring you know because you don't want to be too close to the ropes or you know and it, i mean it, dude I, i'm gonna tell you now and i'm sure ryan will contest anybody else who's been in the pro wrestling industry in any way shape or form it is one of it is the, literally the hardest thing i've ever had to do in my entire life there's so much to absorb so much to remember they're like you know you learn the bumps you learn how to put moves together you learn psychology of a match you learn how to work the crowd you learn how to go out you have to learn how to entertain you know you need to learn how to improvise on your feet and all that shit like it is completely insane all the shit you need to learn and how to fine tune it and make people believe it and buy it and that's you know it, that that's what got me here everything i have today is because of that and yeah it's actually funny um you know, uh, there, there's something that's going to be going on in September or whatever. And I'm not sure if it's been announced or whatever, but, um, you know, someone just kind of was like, Hey, you know, do you want to come out and kind of do this? And I'm like, you know, I totally would, you know, and you know, what's going on is something that would mean a ton to me because the people involved with it, you know, one of the guys is someone that means a hell of a lot to me, but it's also my wife's birthday. And I'm like, I, I don't think I'll be able to, but oh, you know, you, it, you can, you can, you <laughs> can do it. Yeah. Well, there's going to be more birthdays, yeah, but, right? I mean, that's the thing. Like if she ends up working that night though, then I'll be like, all right, you know, I'm in have it as a surprise, you know, but that, that's just the whole thing of, you know, Let me just celebrate her birthday but, a different day. Yeah. <laughs> and just yeah, and then have an Orioles game the next day. Yes. That, that's gonna work out <laughs> brilliantly. That's gonna work out and, great in my favor. And of course, we're right here on YouTube Live. Some of you may have tuned in earlier and we're like, what the fuck's happening? Because we played some of our uh um Oculus VR um video fuckery that we had um going on last weekend when Matt was high as a kite. Of course, we're right here on YouTube Live. It is Memorial Day weekend. We are kicking off the Memorial Day holiday, so hopefully nobody's caught in traffic. Hopefully nobody's having any problems with traffic and of course right here is our happy hour podcast i'm wearing the tank top version of our 6869 camo um tank top so that's available over at the hhpod.com make sure to go out um get yours today and uh, daisy jopling she'll be joining us momentarily and uh, i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get into one of our drunken ramblings which is our news articles and uh go ahead and we'll start with this one right here and this one is young scandinavians are sticking nicotine pouches up their asses because why not yeah because why not <laughs> so use the motherboard spoke to describe the tucking nick inside the foreskin of his feet what one well, user motherboard spoke to Describe tucking a nicotine patch inside the foreskin of his he, penis. You read it right the first time. Okay, oh, like, I, I was, was like, going to yeah, show him yeah. sticking uh, under his foreskin. <laughs> yeah. I, I, just, I really thought that was going to be a picture. <laughs> that's of, yeah, 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 you, you just yeah. see the penis with the picture. <laughs> young, young Danes are sticking nicotine pouches up their asses and inside their foreskin, and a trend that life health experts that that left health experts concerned and baffled, according to Danish national broadcaster DR. Health mm. experts from across Denmark, including the country's National Health Institute, confirmed the trend to DR 
independently, Motherboard found multiple threads on Scavin Scandinavian forums where users discussed placing nicotine patches on or up intimate body parts. Nicotine pouches are popular in Scandinavia, especially among young people. Snus, a wet, a wet tobacco pouch that originates from Sweden, has a particularly long tradition in the sub uh, in the sub region, despite being illegal in every European Union country, save Sweden itself. In Denmark, the word snus is oftentimes used as a catch-all term for any tobacco or nicotine pouch placed underneath the upper lip. That you see a lot of that in baseball. A lot of people do snus under their lip in baseball. So that that's really common in baseball. Users report a mild a mild burning sensation in the gum during use. Actually, I think that's what killed Tony Gwynn. I think Tony Gwynn used to use a lot of snus when he played baseball, and I think that led to him, you know, getting. Can I think it was mouth, mouth cancer. cancer or some yeah. shit. And it said in July, a Danish law came into effect that banned the use of snus and other nicotine pouches during school hours after reports of students sticking the packets, sticking the packets around classrooms. I'm like, some of this wording is just weird, or else I'm just I, I'm just a well, word of fuck. from Scandinavia yeah. wrote it. So. One teenager <laughs> whom DR spoke to recounted how he and a group of friends had stuck nicotine bags up the foreskin of their genitals while drunk at a party. Why? Like what? So, okay, so here's my well, thing. Well, listen, okay. So, <laughs> I'm just trying to think, because if you, right, like, yeah. so, when you stuff stuff up your ass, like, like alcohol. You, well, like you're your, not putting it up your well, ass, you so you're putting, chug, it, right? you're, you're putting it in your penis, well, like I'm the saying, whole well, of your I'm penis. About, I'm, okay, I'm starting with the asshole first, okay? <laughs> All right. Matt starts with the <laughs> asshole, with and the then asshole he works first. around to the penis. But <laughs> you, uh, like a gentleman should. Right. Yes, you, yes. You, you tend to get, like, like more yeah. drunk right when you when you butt chug okay so i imagine butt chug. <laughs> i would imagine the same thing with the nicotine you yeah. get it like straight away like when you stuff coke, like anything you just yeah. get it more quicker because i think i don't i don't know why i don't know what the fucking science oh, is behind it that's what you're asking okay but. so meanwhile a health expert told the broadcaster about a boy she had spoken to who had claimed to have done the same they got drunk and one forgot to take out the nicotine pouch again she told DR the next morning he woke up and his penis was red and very swollen and hurting. Well, I guess the oh, fuck yeah. so. Oh, of course. Like, <laughs> yeah. that was the first and last time he tried it. It would fucking, I it wouldn't even be the first time I would try right. it. That that's shit. where like, I was getting with it. Like yeah. the butthole, I get the foreskin. I, yeah. I don't understand. Wait, hold on. Wait, I, I read a little bit farther down. So, but, uh, oh, no. Denmark is not the only Scandinavian country where teenagers seem to be putting nicotine pouches in odd spaces. A student in Norway who asked to remain anonymous told Motherboard about how he had experimented with placing snus inside his foreskin. I was bored and was about <laughs> to take a snus and masturbate. So, <laughs> so he, he was doing snus and masturbating. And, yeah. and, masturbating. <laughs> and my curiosity got the better of me, he said. So I tucked it in. It was a low strength, all white dry portion. Oh, I didn't I like how it's described. Yeah, yeah. It. yeah. And I didn't feel too much of an effect. Maybe it would have been different with a stronger, moist one. Okay. I got it, a cold okay. sensation. Is this article from, real? Because he's either from he's ice. is it's he talking about ice. masturbating <laughs> or, or nicotine yeah. pouches? He, 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 said, he said, I got a I got a cold sensation from menthol. So, and uh, other well, curious users right. seem to have had more success and thread on a Norwegian <laughs> forum. Another snus report, user reported sticking the product up their ass. Tried to put snus in my anus once, they said. Quite painful after a few minutes. But the nicotine craving disappeared, so I guess it works. Uh, Jesus uh, okay. Christ. Okay, like, Jesus H. Christ. Like, what in the actual fuck? is going on in Denmark. So I'll be back in one second. I got to use the bathroom before uh, Daisy comes in. But sure. yeah, you guys keep on talking about like, I, I mean, I, dude, I don't understand. I, I, really I, don't. I would try it, <laughs> you know, like you would try it. I like, would try it. I mean, I get the, the menthol -y part when you stick that under the foreskin, you know, I mean, that, that'd be a pretty cool sensation. I would, I would imagine. Must be nice to have a foreskin. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> It's either you get rid of it or you keep it. It's really up to your parents <laughs> at the point of birth, but you know. It's such a such a strange fucking dynamic, isn't it? Like you have no say over it. You're just, right. Your parents decide what your penis will look like. I wanted my foreskin, daddy. Please, <laughs> why? Like, you know, yeah. Why did you cut it off? 
But I feel like no grown man would make the decision to have it cut off. Right. I mean, I, I don't know. Like you say, I, the, I mean, I've watched plenty of porn where they keep it. They say it makes the penis look bigger. I just think it makes it look like an anteater. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like an anteater, basically. It's so just here, like it's, here's my, it's here's, weird looking. Here's my real question. My real question. And look, and hold on, though. Yeah. The problem with foreskins, though, they say that you can develop more, uh, what, um, track infections and oh, shit. Oh, yeah, urinary track infections. See, here's my thing. We're going to uh, – one, one quick statement, and then we'll let Daisy in and uh, get rolling with Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> my wife smokes menthol cigarettes so if she puts that in her ass is she going to get like a cold sensation like from I, the menthol like, looks like now, now i just trying yeah. something new to know. Yeah. I, it would would you get the cold sensation if she blew you after a cigarette i don't know i that that's an easier like one for you to try. in your mouth uh-huh. like uh, what is it no pop rocks it's yeah, the opposite pop of pop rocks. how about she puts the, <laughs> the nicotine in her butt with the menthol and then you then you have anal sex. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would be pretty good sensation. Uh, well, no, it really, it kind of doubles I, up. I'm sold. It, it doubles up. Instead, of me, instead of me putting the nicotine in myself, it's already in her butt. So, you know, the right. force and the motion just shoves it, you know, into, into your people. That's, so, all right. Yeah, so, right. it's two for one. Daisy in, and we're going to move on from this conversation. I wanted to knock that out before we let Daisy in, before <laughs> we traumatize her too bad. So, we're going to go ahead and admit her in right here on, uh, on YouTube Live. Yeah. <laughs> Like when I read that line, I was just kind of like, "Am I really reading this right now?" Like, it didn't sound because, real. Yeah, right? because the first part of it, I'm reading it, and I'm just kind of like, "Wait a minute! Like, this doesn't sound right." And of course, here's our guest, Daisy Jopling. How you doing? Amazing! Great to be here. Thank you so much for having me, you guys. Oh no, no problem. Welcome to the Happy Hour Podcast. Of course, you probably talked to Aline a little bit. You know, we're we're a little out there. We're a little over the top. Of love course, it. Love it. Love it. You're, you're a professional violinist. You have the Daisy Joplin band. Um, you know, what, what, what's it like? Like, I mean, I, I saw a lot of stuff online. You know, it looks like you play a lot of theaters and all that. Like, what what are some of the craziest moments you've had, like, you know, just performing with your band and, you know, being out on the road? Um, I mean, I do love the actual performance, like, <laughs> actual, I mean, like, playing. I, I, had a, I had a gig, well, you know, a moment when uh, I was playing in Vienna for 30,000 people, which is normal for some people, but it wasn't normal for me. And like just walking out, the crowd sound was like, are you kidding me? I hadn't even done anything yet. And I remember the elation afterwards just lasted for, I think, days, you know. So, (laughs) I mean, that's what rock stars have to cope with, you know, the up and down of that. Um, So, yeah, and and when I was a kid, I was 14 years old and I got my first really big gig of playing a solo in the Royal Albert Hall, which is also just this moment, like when I perform, something kind of happens. I mean, I can just let go of everything, you know, I guess it's like whatever, the energy yeah. flowing through us, the music flowing through us. I just feel in a kind of like state, you know, it's you really get, you get, Your adrenaline gets going and you kind of vibe with the crowd. Because, I mean, Tom was talking a little, we were talking about a little bit when we first came on because Tom just did a show called Comedy Mania, which was a wrestling and comedy thing. And, you know, my background, 20 years of pro wrestling. So that was the first time Tom had ever been in a wrestling ring. And I'm like, dude, like, you have no idea. But it's the thing. Have you ever played anywhere? Like, have you ever played anywhere like in Asia, like in in japan or china oh i have toured so much in china so it was amazing i was actually just talking to somebody last night you know my experience pretty much is we have and i think of myself as this open-minded person i tour around the (laughs) world you know i've lived in these different countries but there's so many countries i get to and everything is so not what i think it's gonna be so i'm imagining i mean you mentioned two countries japan china um i actually the group that i first went to china with was a string trio, but we wrote all our own music and we decided we're going to introduce all of our music in Japanese because Japanese, I mean, when I went to Japan, right? I don't know if I said China or Japan. <laughs> when I went to Japan, uh, I did not speak Japanese and, because Chinese is really, uh, for me, really difficult to speak. But Japanese, you can kind of roll along with it. You know, you, so we practiced probably the introductions more than we practiced the music. Like we really, 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 really practiced how to introduce in Japanese. They yeah. could not believe it. And we were told listen you know we're used to traveling around the world where people are kind of like a rock audience to us practically not you know nearly whilst the japanese are going to be like 
That's where I was going to bring That's that what up. That's you're told. Yeah, but you know I, what? Yeah. We get there. We st- and we'd kind of created the and we'd really worked with like our agent out there, like these Japanese people to say, you know, is this going to work? We want to make this joke. We, so we kind of built in these jokes. And, I, and the string trio was with me. Another violinist called Alexei Goodisman, who's, by the way, amazing. Alexei Goodisman, check him out. <laughs> he is a natural comedian. He yeah. walks on stage and he's trying to be like serious. You just can't stop laughing. And then the other guy is a cellist, Tristan Schultz, an amazing composer. So so we go on stage and Alexei is like saying something. And this audience that I'm imagining are going to be so like restrained and, you know, like nothing's showing emotionally. The guy, one of the guys on the front row couldn't believe we're speaking in Japanese, telling jokes in Japanese. He thought it was so funny because they have that like extrovertness. I mean, I was there years ago. It might be different now. Um, But like he literally thought it was so funny. He just like practically fell off his chair on the front row laughing. Like, you know, something that where we might be laughing in the States, but we wouldn't like go crazy and like fall over, you know. So these people just, just, they were going crazy for us. And then in China, what was interesting, I toured there quite recently, like for two months, I did 30 shows in 30 different cities around like right from the north to the south of China uh, on the east coast I guess it is um, they so, so basically right you know so for the last 20 30 years there's been a big push from the Chinese government to get kids to learn western classical music right so there's a lot of kids playing the violin a lot of kids playing the piano they're really kind of into it and so we had a lot of parents coming with their kids to our shows there and the kids, so I'm imagining same thing, like don't, don't, you know, they're gonna be restrained. The kids were up dancing. They were like, you wow. know, like conducting along. They're like clapping that, you know, like uh, just having the time of their life in a totally, these were classical music halls. I mean, they've just built in China over the last 10, 20, but even like 10 years, all of these mega, they're like one Carnegie Hall after the other, but not, and you know, they're supposed to have like the best acoustic in the world, but not just that, they got the most like totally state-of-the-art lighting and sound. Really? Carnegie Hall, you can do a concert, but it's not really like high state-of-the-art lighting and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. we're playing in these kind of like gloriously red plush, you know, ornamented, like amazing halls. And these kids are just like acting like they're in a place, I don't know, <laughs> like having a great time. And we were like, this is so cool. So it's always been a different experience than, than how I've imagined. And they went crazy for us in China as well. I mean, they love the violin, so. Well, it, it was weird because I've I've never myself had had the pleasure to wrestle in Japan, China, anywhere like that. But I've heard stories of guys going over there, and they said it's a whole different world because they'll wrestle and they're quiet until they do something they like. Like they'll they'll go through headlock, whatever, boom, boom, this out another, boom, body slam, and they'll all be like. And they're not used to that because here in America, you're so used to the fans being in your face all the time, yeah, all the time. Yeah, the headlock. Yeah. You're like, hey, why don't you sit down and shut up and then you know rinse <laughs> yeah. it. You can't do that there because they're just, you know, sitting there watching, you know, <laughs> waiting for something to happen. And that's why I brought that up because I was like, man, uh, was it kind of like that as well? Or were they? Yeah, just- I think in Japan it was a bit like that. And then it was like the, when something happened, it was so over the top. We were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's like, oh my God. I mean, the kind of thing, because I've played like thousands of concerts, you know, I'll never forget that concert where that guy just fell off his chair laughing, you know? It's like, oh my God, like it was just so, so out there, you know? I mean, just great. It was fun, you know, it was awesome. Um, But yeah. And with that, have you ever played any place that was like kind of sketchy? Like, have you ever went anywhere where like you kind of got off your bus and you were just kind of like, all right, I want to get on the bus and we're just going to get, get our asses out of here we're just you know we're what? just gonna pack up and just go <laughs> yeah, well, yeah it was more like in the actual concert uh, uh, maybe i'll try and think of that scenario as well but like normally if you're on tour they kind of don't they kind of don't really take you to those places you know yeah. you know I, I mean it's quite a funny actually because I, I don't know how it is for you you know you're living here but there is like a kind of marketing that um, that the united states puts out to the world you know which is like we're the land of the free we're you know come here and you're going to be able to make money and yeah. and like you know er- everything is like i mean you know we know this stuff but you, you really think this like equality and you know all the things that the constitution kind of stands for and then when you come on tour here they're like oh no no you can't go to that area of washington and you're like what do you mean you no 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 that's no no that's dangerous no you can't go over there no and i'm like i thought this was supposed to be you know this kind of... anyway but that's the us but i want to tell you okay so we're touring i used to live in vienna austria and we toured a lot in italy 
and also to Sicily. Now, I'm talking again 15 years, you know, a a while ago. So it might be different, but maybe not. I don't know. So we're going to this concert hall in Sicily. Nice concert hall. It's like this kind of beautiful dome shape. You know, it's gorgeous. It's like how, how many hundreds of years old and everything's like so beautiful over there. And we get in there and we sit down, you know, go on the stage, you know, sit down for the concert. And there's this row of guys in the front row. Like, I mean, literally the shades. I mean, they just look like they all just dropped out of Godfather. Like they (laughs) are so, you know, just kind of like the macho, like kind of. Yeah. You look, you know, like, like. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the, the they Ray just Liotta basically from Goodfellas, who just passed away, by the way, like the Ray Liotta of like you know the whole bunch, like hey, you know, <laughs> mafia, mafia, and it was uh, for some reason it looked so nearly like cliche. It was nearly <laughs> comical to me. But yeah, my, the two guys in my trio because those guys did not clap once in the whole show. Really. They did not. Sm- they did not. No emotion. They sat. Were they, were they there for a hit? Is that what it was like? Maybe. <laughs> maybe they were in the crowd and they were there. Like they're a rival. Ma- they're a rival mafia gang, and they're just there to like you know pluck some guy named Tony in the head, and they're just mad because they can't find Tony, yeah. and they just want to stand up at some point and just bob right in between you know well, the eyes. Well, you know like- what, it, what, it, what it could be? It could be some like Secret Service like giving away oh, secrets yeah, and stuff yeah. and have the violins like <laughs> drowning it out the, like trade secrets yeah, and shit yeah. i mean I, I it sounds to me like daisy just owed somebody money like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she's playing and they're just staring at her angrily <laughs> i mean it was they were so like hardcore and i just i tried not to get the giggles on stage alexei my other two guys and tristan they were pissed they were like those damn guys like they're really ruining my show because i'm trying to have a good time and they're looking so pissed off the whole time but maybe they just have to sit on the front row like this you know they're like i don't know it was just funny so that was like woo because it was pretty hardcore like the vibe coming off those guys and they were the whole front row were like, okay, oh my God, it's not like you can't, you know, not like you can avoid looking at them. <laughs> yeah, and they probably gave you the like the best review, like, oh, the show was magnificent. Yes, <laughs> it was the best show we've ever seen in our life. Like, but I mean, here, here's the thing, like, you know, it's crazy, and this is going to lead me into one of the, you know, subjects we're going to talk about tonight is at, when, when you play an instrument like that, like, imagine what it was like, you know, and of course, we've all seen the movie Titanic. You know, those guys that, you know, played on the Titanic as it was sinking down. It's like, you, you got to imagine what went down. Like, I, I don't know if that really happened in real life, but I picture, like, I picture in my mind, there's so many things. I see Titanic in a different light. Like, you know, I wonder if, like, the guy who built the Titanic, he went up to those guys and he handed them a bunch of money. He's like, look, I don't care what happens. You keep playing. I don't care what happens was, at all. I don't mafia. care if this ship sinks. It's not going to sink. But if this ship sinks, you keep playing. That's what this money's going to do. <laughs> you just see everybody just around. Like, there's a guy falling, hitting a railing. And these guys are just, just well, you know. You know what, though? I would, I would do that. Like, because uh, as an artist, yeah. our whole point in life is to you know, somehow uplift the human spirit, How, however that is for us, whether it's to express an emotion that, you know, other people around the world are feeling so we can just connect to it. But I know everywhere I go, I mean, I like to bring my violin over the place and like, you know, pop up and play at a police station here or pop up and play in like, the, you know, the subway there. And definitely if that was me, I, well, what when we knew we were all going to die, I would definitely carry on playing that violin till I'm like underneath the definitely because that's why i'm here it's weird because my wife showed me and this is what made me think of it my wife showed me a video on tiktok that pretty much of what the titanic really looked like when it sank and you know everybody sits there and thinks that you know you can see everything like no you're out in the middle of the ocean at night it is pitch black dark so you don't even know what's going on you just hear this somber music Uh. in the background and you're just like i don't know it's scary you know, as it is, but then just hearing the music as like, you know, you're holding on to a railing, you know, trying to right. fall. It's just kind of like, oh my God, like, you know, what, what's going on right yeah, now? Yeah, because like, I've been on a yeah. cruise ship and I mean, besides yeah, all I the lighting and stuff, I, can't do it. I mean, obviously, yeah, right. no. but uh, the only thing you see is like the moon coming up from the ocean or the sun rather. 
come from the ocean and just disappear to the other side of the ocean. There's nothing else around you, and it's just just water. So I can I would imagine that's pretty scary. Well, I mean, being on a ship while it's sinking. I I've never done a cruise. I don't think I'm going to do a cruise mainly because I have this fear of being trapped out in the middle of the ocean. Like I just I've always I can't. That's something I can't. Get Maybe past. you had another life where it really happened to you. Maybe I don't know. May, I may have died on the Titanic. Have died I feel like Titanic. I may have died on the Titanic. Maybe, maybe you were playing the violin on the Titanic. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was going to say that. Well, yeah. here, here's the thing. And, and thinking about that movie is me and my coworker actually, for some reason, we were talking about Billy Zane. And I feel like ba- Billy Zane is kind of the <laughs> unsung hero of that movie. Like everybody hated his I character. Think Billy Zane is an but, unsung actor. Really, yeah, but. he's an unsung hero as an actor. But I feel like everybody, like you know, they hated his character. But everybody forgets that he saved that young child. Yes, he <laughs> may have pried that child from their mother's grasp and was like, "I have a child," and got on a lifeboat and rolled out. But he saved that child's life. And also, yeah. if I wonder what happened to that child. Yeah. Did he keep it or just like, all right, get away from me, yeah. kid, and just uh, drop what, it off? What, what's her, what, what was her name? What was uh, Kate Winslet's name in that movie? Uh, Rose. Rose. If Rose would have never got with Jack, would she have let Billy Zane's character? Billy Zane's character would not have stood for her laying on a plank board that clearly had enough room for two people <laughs> and sinking to the, to the bottom yeah. completely. Like, you know, that that's just the whole thing with that. And uh, I mean, imagine them sitting there and then all of a sudden you just look up rescue boats start showing up but one of the rescue boats is the black pearl the black pearl just comes zooming down and you just see jack sparrow just in the front and it's like at that point rose is meeting a different jack she's meeting captain jack sparrow at this point like that's the sequel that i want to see i want to see disney's version of (laughs) pirates of the caribbean save the titanic Titanic. yeah they rescue the titanic survivors and then they have to deal with jack sparrow and all of his she's got a thing for jacks yeah (laughs) And, uh, and poor leonardo DiCaprio just gets stuck with Amber Heard. Yes, yeah, <laughs> like, like that's the thing. Leonardo DiCaprio gets stuck with Adam with Amber Heard, and he's just like, "Oh man, it's t- this movie's gonna shit the bed." No <laughs> pun intended. Well, no pun intended. <laughs> and, you know, is it that's that's kind of life, isn't it? I mean, yeah. like we really never know where that savior is gonna come from. Oh, you yeah. know, and and really like. What I mean, I just love life because honestly, one's going along and thinking it's like that, and honestly, it's like that. You know what I mean? Oh, it's yeah. like you know yeah. the meaning of everything and why it's happening, and and yeah. what ends up being the end of the story. One one is so like on this story, and it's like, uh, yeah. oh, actually, wait a minute. <laughs> it's like, hello, okay. It's, I mean, which have you ever played on like anything like a cruise ship or or anything? Like I have that? never. I I thought I was going to. It's actually really interesting that you said. Because I, when I first got to the United States, I came in like 2006. And very soon after I got here, I met this guy who organized like, you know, musicians, solo musicians to play on cruise ships. He's like, do you want to play on a cruise ship? I'm like, yeah, why not? And I never did. I don't know. He was like, he never got me any gigs. And uh, I only ended up doing other stuff, you know, touring my band and all this other stuff that I've done. Um, so... I would do it, but it's, it never happened to me so far. <laughs> Somebody listening? Yeah. Well, I, don't, I don't know. I've... I've heard terrible things about the way entertainers are treated on cruise ships. So it might be a good Maybe thing. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about resorts? Would you like ever do like a resort? Because a lot of times resort entertainers are really good too. Like me and my wife, yeah. always, every time we've ever went to a resort in Mexico or wherever, there was always a great entertainment at those too. Like that would be kind of more like a fun, like, you know, you play in front of 35,000 people, but that would also be kind of a cool, like. Oh, it'd be so awesome. Thing. Yeah. I just, you know? I, I actually, it's funny because I spent so much of my life touring that I never would take a holiday in a resort only because I felt like I would take it and go and see my family. Or, I, I don't know. And then I had a friend in 2020, uh, 2020. Yeah. She was like, I'm going to Mexico. Um, you know, I didn't have many concerts that were still in the whole lockdown period. I did do some on an island that we were allowed to do. The only ones, in, we were the only people in New York State allowed to do some concerts um, on this island. It was really cool right here in New York. Anyway, so um, after that, my friend's like, let's go to Mexico. I went, really? I, 
I was like, I don't know if I want to go to a resort. It was it was a really <laughs> special resort, a, a Cabo, like like down the peninsula of Cabo. Anyway, it was like so gorgeous. I'm like, Christ, I need to get myself back here and play a show so I can come back. It was like <laughs> off the charts gorgeous at the time of my life. So yeah, I was like, yeah, I'd come and play in a resort. <laughs> and now now that we brought up the resort stuff and the cruise stuff, that's yeah. going to lead us into, a, a, we did a, a drunken rambling story before you came on. We're going to do another one, which is a news article, which which starts off with couple lives permanently on cruise ships because it's cheaper than housing. So a, a Seattle couple lived aboard a cruise lived aboard cruise ships for the past year after determining it's cheaper than a mortgage, and they have no plans on returning to living on land. Angelin and Richard Burke, both in their fifties, have always dreamed of retiring to a life of travel, according to New Seven in Australia. The couple has been going on a cruise around the world at least once, sometimes twice a year, but it was in early 2021 that Angeline, the accountant, crunched the numbers and found out something unexpected. The pair would retire, could retire now and live aboard cruise ships for as little as $43 a day, cheaper than their current living expenses. That's pretty insane. It's not bad because yeah. they, like cruise ships, they're all inclusive and stuff. So they, oh, just, they pay for your meals and shit. Yeah, yeah. And it said, using their savings and anticipating sale of their Seattle home, the Burks found a way to make life possible by humping from, hopping from cruise ship to cruise ship. They also take full advantage of royalty points and sales to make their dream of retirement on the seas a reality yeah like that that's that, now that's i know insane. what i'm doing yeah like <laughs> could you imagine that though like you know that that uh, it said they began the retirement life by going on a 50-day cruise around the adriatic sea touring much of europe and they followed that with a 51 day cruise from seattle to sydney and they hope to go to every corner of the globe now yeah. me i've never been on a cruise ship but i can't imagine what it's like to be on a boat that long like i i yeah. assume that like a sailor or you know a captain of a you know a ship or you know someone that works on a ship they're used to oh, that. Yeah, but like they me just, i would grow, grow restless yeah dude, so captains quick. and all that stuff that they just once the one cruise ends right then people just board and yeah. then they just do their whole thing again. So like <laughs> yeah. they never. It's almost like a, a pilot. Break. Like yeah, a pilot like is a pilot. always flying. But I mean, that's insane. Like, and especially to schedule these cruises, like they get off one cruise ship, like literally, right. they probably come down the steps, get off one cruise ship, and then get right onto the other cruise ship and go. Like, just, I don't know. That sounds pretty yeah. cheap, though. Well, just, I, I think I might do just that. Just imagine <laughs> that. They, they probably look like royalty. Because imagine, you know, you're sitting there standing in line for the one cruise you're going to get every six years and you just see this couple come off one cruise ship they walk down the steps walk past you and then walk up the steps to another cruise ship and that leaves and then you're just kind of like what's wrong with well, my well, life no, like Why? really really and, really and truly though <laughs> if you think about it because i was talking about somebody earlier day about this shit um since the COVID stuff happened, cruise ships are just trying to basically. Oh yeah, they're they're pretty much away. giving away, you know, right? trips at this point. So but to Maybe. catch up because they're so behind because like like all the cruise ships, oh, you know, they were shut down for all that. Time. Oh yeah, yeah. So they're yeah they're just trying to make up like lost revenue. So well, they're just giving away shit. Before, I could do it. Before, I will do it. Oh yeah. Beforehand, I heard a lot of people. If you, I'm like, going to take the, po- go to the, the podcast abroad. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> podcast, yeah, the happy I'm hour just podcast be abroad. On a cruise ship. I mean, this is my life. That would be actually pretty cool. Those are what? actually kind of popular. Like Chris Jericho does that. He does the rock and wrestling cruise, which he does. You know, he plays in his band Fozzie. And then also, you know, they do pro, a pro wrestling show on the cruise ship itself. What if what if those two people are more viewed like the aunt and uncle that come to stay for the holidays, but never fucking. Oh, leave? yeah. And like all the crews, like all the crews, like personnel and the crews that work on the boat are just like not. Nah, Fucking Tom and Tina again. <laughs> Jesus no, they'll Christ. love them. They'll love them. But, you know, I mean, it's funny because I'm like, I will, I don't ever plan to retire. Like, retire from like doing what I love. I mean, I, you know, all these amazing stories of musicians that, like, in the middle of the concert, they have a heart attack or I don't know, they finish their last note and then they, you know, they're done. <laughs> That's my dream. So, like, yeah. I and mean, if, and of course, on our live feed, Parviz will commented cheers from germany so shout out to germany who i think actually it's pretty goddamn late 
over in Germany right now. Germany? Like I believe it's it might be early in the morning. It is six hours, six hours difference. So six hours, yeah. So they're they're coming it's in pretty. Good. So yeah, shout out to Germany. Love nice. your beer. You have some of the best beer. So yes. So yeah. I love playing in Germany. I one of my favorite countries to play concerts in. I it's a beautiful country. Oh my god! And the people are really you know and, really love and, music. And I just bought a Volkswagen. So shout out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's almost like when Tom was saying he was from Camden when we were talking about living in Britain. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm from Camden." I'm like, "You're talking about America, you doofus!" Like, <laughs> wait, who's from Camden? That's who? who is from Camden? Uh, there was a what was it? Uh, what was her name? We we had uh, someone on the cat. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, what because was actually, I was born just right next to Camden. I mean, that's pretty much where I'm from. Were you? Okay. Camden. Okay. Uh, Elaine represents her too. I forgot what her name was right off the top. She, ru- she runs like the the kitty cat brothel, not brothel, but like the uh, where they dress like cats and yeah. fucking hang out. It's, yeah. a, it's a brothel, basically. <laughs> but, <you> know, <laughs> I don't. I, no, yeah. I don't know. I don't think they do any uh, sexual things there. No, I mean, they, if you they could, dress up, they dress up like cats. That's what they do. They could. dress up like cats. Yeah, they dress like, up. They dress up like cats, and that guy dressed like a magician, and they like hang out. <laughs> did, I'm not, that's the way he dressed. He didn't dress up like a magician. That's he the way he actually looked. Like, no, Isabel, he, oh, Isabella Karnstein. It was, it was Isabella Karnstein. So Elaine represents her Magician. as well. So that's who it was. But no, and I, I'm I'm a mush brain as it is. I've been hit in the head so many times during pro wrestling, and you know I've had five concussions. Could you play a guitar or an electric guitar like a violin? Is there is there a way that you could hold a guitar up? Are you and are, play it like a violin? Are you asking if they have an electric violin? No, or? I'm just I'm just asking if you could play a guitar like a violin. Like it, uh, like are the strings for a guitar and a probably. violin different? You probably like, could. I mean, I don't know. Like, why not just get a bow? You know. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know? I've I've played guitar for like 21 years, and I can't play the violin. So I <laughs> I'm gonna assume that it's not as easy as just doing that. Tom, have you <laughs> ever tried? I mean, that's, so it has to be a violinist who's taking a guitar and like you know putting it under their chin. I mean, it might be a little bit big. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine this, and and also like the strings, you know. I'm th- are the strings different, the- or are they the same? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are different, and all, anyway, okay. different guitars obviously have different strings made of different materials. But like e- everything about like the violin or the electric violin or, or the acoustic violin, everything about it is like to make it really sound amazing so like the the material of the strings the like width of the string so when you you know like draw the bro bow across it it's gonna really sound great so but, but why not i mean i guess you know <laughs> it probably is better to get an electric violin <laughs> rather well, that's than what i was gonna ask do they have, do they have <laughs> electric violins is there like a such thing like i know they have electric guitars oh I- yeah I don't think I, I play ever... electric violin. I play, I play electric violin as well as acoustic violin. Okay. Like, okay. I, actually, when I when I first came to the states, so I I was I grew up in the middle of nowhere in England. I mean, I was born next to Camden when I was one year old. I went. Uh, my family moved to the countryside, like the countryside, like <laughs> opposite this big marsh. You could kind of see the sea, like right out. There's a big marsh, and then there's just hills behind me. No houses around, and and we we had no television, and so we just had classical music. And somehow I didn't know about anything apart from classical music. I mean, my parents thought that was the best thing for a child's mind, so we weren't even really allowed to listen to other music. And there was well, no it makes you know, more intelligent. There was no, I don't know, whatever. There, there was no real like you know no computers or internet or anything back then. So so basically you know i'm growing up classical music and then when i came here to the u.s i found out about rock music and you know things like the who bubba yeah. o'reilly which has that awesome violin solo so i'm like oh i gotta play that and um, well, all my fans wanted me to play it as well so so i got my electric my normal violin i hadn't played electric violin when i first came here and started rocking out on it and after a while i noticed like i've got this it's nearly 250 year old violin i mean like killing amazing violin i noticed like this kind of crack forming in the violin i'm like oh shit you know <laughs> like, oh, no 
So yeah, I'm like, I, I immediately I went, you know, you can get it glued up. I mean, it's it's fine, it's totally fine. But I was like, I went that day and bought an electric violin. I'm like, I I cannot do this, you know, because it's a <laughs> violin. And from then on, anytime I play rock music, you know, and I want to get that vibe, electric violin is perfect. Nice. Right now, do you guys ever? Like speaking of rock music, do you guys ever do like any kind of covers or anything? And if you do, what are some of your favorite ones that you guys have done? Well, I did this whole album, 2019, of covers of The Who, uh, who I just went to see last night in Madison Square Garden. Um, and nice. yeah, it's kind of it's kind of cool because there's like me, a classic, classic trained violinist playing The Who, and now they've got this whole orchestra going with them, you know, so it's like they're moving to classical, I'm moving to rock. It's like, it's cool. <laughs> um, anyway, but yeah, so we, we did like tons of Tommy tunes and that's that music to play that music. <laughs> It's like, it's so much fun. It's funny because when I first started playing it and I had not grown up on it. I mean, I'm from England, but I had, did not know who the who were. Like the album's called Who's Who. The who? Uh, the who? <laughs> yeah, the who. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, but I felt like, I don't know. I felt so like at home playing it. I could, just the fact that I can be so totally extrovert with my emotions and jump around on stage and it was funny though because my my I told my family you know I've got ton massive family back in England and they're very artistic and they're in the theater world and the film world and the music world and they're they're like bloody amazing basically they're famous and all this stuff but um they're not really in the rock world and so yeah. so I'm kind of like out there as far as they're concerned and um <laughs> so I told them I'm doing this you know this album this album of covers of the who and they didn't know who the who were either so they looked online and, and then my aunt called me and she's like Daisy um, it seems like the Who used to like smash their instruments on stage. <laughs> I hope you're not gonna yeah. do that. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, I was like, no, mom, don't worry. <laughs> I mean, no, my aunt. It was. I it won't was beat that little China yeah. man in the front row with my with my violin. I well, won't do that. It's funny because I feel like a violin would be a lot easier than a guitar. But it's a guitar. They need to like that thing's big. They need to shoo, has some weight behind it. A violin, like violins, I'm sure they have some weight to them. But you can just <laughs> one hand that thing. You're just breaking over like, your knee. I can't even bear that thought. I can't even tell you because I've played the same violin for so many years now. I got it when I was a child, and it's like, oh wow, it, it's like I can't even tell you. I, you know, I've lived in so I lived in in London. You know, well, really England, but then I moved to London when I was a teenager, and um, so England, and then Austria and Vienna, and then here, you know, in New York, and um, my violin's just the thing that's always with me. Like I can live anywhere around the world. I can tour around the world. You know, I mean, there's people in my life, like my families or my friends or my whoever I'm with, you know, but yeah. like my violins, it's like, it's amazing. My violin's always with me. Yeah. I'm the same way. Like I said, I played guitar for my like entire life yeah. and I've had every kind of guitar you could really think of over the years. Yeah. And my favorite is still my same like piece of shit acoustic that I've had since I was young. <laughs> And that thing will never go anywhere. And it's nothing fancy, but it's been yeah. mine forever. Yeah. And like I've had four or five thousand dollar guitars, and I'm just like, whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it's been there through your journey. Oh yeah. Oh, dude, if that thing could talk, I've spilled yeah. more beer and cigarettes on that thing than I could bear to talk about. <laughs> I love that, that guitar has seen things. <laughs> oh yes, it has. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm also I'm like everybody asked me. So who played on my violin before I had it? You know, I mean, it was made in Italy. The, the guy's called Antonio Graniani, made in Livorno in 1778. So wow. just imagine, I mean, so it was kind of cool because I play this like reggae version of Vivaldi, like the Four Seasons, <laughs> which sounds killing. I love it. And I'm always, I introduced it often by saying, okay, look, this music was written just 50 years before my violin was made. It was written like seven, they don't know exactly, 1720, 1723. Um, and so therefore my violin was made to play Vivaldi and I'm still playing it like three mm -hmm hundred years later you know on this particular violin nearly trying to 50 years later and and i'm like just to think so i have not researched who played on my violin i don't know why it's like can you, can you well, find so, out like can, is there like I a number so. on or anything where you can find out who played on it before? it's really weird but i don't know if i really want to know I mean, <laughs> now really it makes weird. sense but for sure, people like poured their heart and soul into this i mean this is a great oh, violin so it's always been like great violinists who played it you know what i mean right well, well at least professional come in full circle, I bet it was that mafia 
that was at your show. Well, you, you have you have his grandfather's violin. Yep. That's what it is. You had his grandfather's violin. He just, he just wanted to know yeah. if it was in good hands. Yeah. He he's he's sitting, <laughs> you're playing the violin, and he's just sitting there angrily watching as you're playing. He wasn't the violin. angry, yeah. he was just emotional. It's gonna be back in my family one day. <laughs> <laughs> and have you ever, while you're playing, have you ever had like your bow or like any of the strings like break while oh playing. all the bloody time i mean first of all <laughs> it's like oh shit like you know just yeah, the actual bow is like got horse hair on it i don't know if you know yeah. that but yeah so so those horse hairs well when i play classical music they don't fly off but when i when i when i play rock Oh my God. And I mean, I have to get a lot, I have to get new hairs on it a lot, but sometimes on tour, like you go into all these, even in China where, you know, everybody plays the violin, but uh, you know, the smallest cities we played in were like 2 million people, but you know, normally 20, 30 million, but okay. So you're going to the 20, 30 million people places. There's like a place where you can get the new hairs, you know, cause you have to have it professionally done and it's you know, whatever. Other sometimes it was quite difficult. And also I'm touring, like, you know, you arrive at a place because the bow hair only takes about an hour, but you still got to get there you got to find it anyway there were some times when it just wasn't very easy to get like the rehair done enough and i'm in the concert <laughs> like the, so the hairs you know are like a little bit not old because i've been there a week or something but i played on it so much so i start to play well then you know the slow music's fine but when it gets like hardcore the hairs are like flying all over the place i mean the audience loves it it looks like charlie daniels you know whatever <laughs> but um but so, so yeah, and then I've had strings break. Luckily, not recently, because the string breaking, that's the, you know, on the actual violin, it's kind of annoying because you can still keep playing if those hairs are flying off. But like if the string breaks, you really have to stop. So, so basically, my band are like, okay, guys, improvise a number. I'm going off backstage, you know, to put a new one on. Oh, backstage! Get me a horse, stat. <laughs> I need a horse. So actually, the strings on the violin, you know, they used to actually be made of animal gut. I mean, sheep gut, literally sheep gut, like cat gut. Now they're like more like metal or like a fiber that's kind of, I guess, like a gut. Some of them still have the gut inside them, but um, that's that's anyway. a good for barrack but okay <laughs> like sounds really <laughs> awful doesn't it i don't think they i don't think they really yeah. any. back in the day you needed a horse and three sheep to play one song <laughs> here's my thing with, with the bow you said it has horse hair so right. i wonder if anybody like let's say they got the hair from like a, a racing horse you know so i wonder if they named their bow after, after that horse. horse like you know could you imagine or if they've showed the bow to the horse the horse would know like if it was familiar like that's my hair <laughs> that's my hair i worked hard for that hair that's like my but no with, with the hair of the horse like like do you know like is it like I they're from they have to be certain like horses i actually never thought of this whether they're bred especially to make the hair for the bowls, but there's definitely like, the, you know, they're not racing horses or something like that. They're yeah. like, uh, you know, but there are so, and I couldn't even tell you. I actually, it's a really good question. Like, what actually? I'm sure you could Google it. You know, what? Yeah, yeah. Like, is it off their mane or? But it is know, off the. It is off the tail. Okay. Basically. <laughs> you know, it has to be like that length, so that so it's off the tail. Um, but in, and also there's like you know when I get my bow rehaired because of the type because of the passion how I play and the type of music I play I get like you know on the kind of scale from like the finer thinner hairs to the you know thicker ones that are stronger i'll get kind of towards the thicker ones not necessarily really thick but like so i can get the i can get both i can get the finesse because i'll play some really beautiful songs i mean even if it's a pop five or something it's still like you know touches your heart and makes you cry and stuff and then and then i'll get to the rock song and i want like i want that like, you know power so um yeah i bet you anyway. own a ranch don't you <laughs> So you get <laughs> unlimited supply of horse hair. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what we're going to do real quick is we're going to get into our new featured beer, which our new featured beer is from Stella Artois. Nice. Stella Artois. And Artois. it is their limited edition midnight lager. 
So make sure you go right. out, find some of their midnight lager. And of course, you know, us being, you know, the way we are, we're like, is it Stella a toi or is it Stella yeah. Artois or our twice? And we actually went to Google and did the voice thing and it said Stella a toi. So we knew it was Stella a toi. So shout out to Stella right. a toi. Make sure you go out, find some of their yep. midnight lager and don't, it's, it's, don't be right. like us. Don't be idiots like us and think that it's our twice or, or anything like that. It's our twa. Just and, ask for our twa. And it is much <laughs> better than expected. And it says Anno 1366, so it's probably about as old as your yeah, violin. Yes, pr- pronounce it, pronounce it right, or else you're going to make an Italian man angry at Daisy's show, and he's going to sit there and not enjoy himself the entire time. <laughs> but it is pretty good. It is pretty good. I was impressed. And then, of course, with that, we're going to get into our featured shot. So our featured shot is actually oh, starting yeah. to wear down a little bit, and our featured shot, of course, is Ten High Sour Mash. So this has been around for a little bit. We've actually cut down this a little bit, but uh, there were a few weeks we neglected this, which I felt kind of bad. No, I just you know, it's like, yeah, we, we just, we generally Sometimes forgot. Sometimes we I'm get like, away you know. in our show and we just. <laughs> so here's that tradition, uh, age old tradition of pouring this over the laptop and praying for the best. And uh, there we go. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going get, to get into our Ode Humanity game segment, concluding this. So we'll play a couple of games and uh, so here we go. Uh, shout out to Ten High and uh, their sh- sour mash whiskey. And uh, let's go ahead and mash it down our gullet. <laughs> oh, oh, God. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that oh, bad, you wuss. God. Ugh. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to get into our Ode to Humanity segment. So we play a couple of games with our guests. The first game is called Incoherent. So Incoherent, pretty much what we're going to do, we actually, for everybody watching at home and everybody that sees us you know, on YouTube, check out episode 100, which was the HH Pod Rumble. Johnny Goodluck won that. We actually had 30 guests come back. We did a Royal Rumble type thing like in WWE where they got eliminated by this game. And I'm shocked how good everybody did at this game because when we normally do it, they don't do a great job. But pretty much we're going to show a series of cards and they're going to be in drunken lingo. Sound them out out loud and try to figure out what they are. And we'll give you a few hints as well if uh, you can't figure out what they are. So this is going to be the first one right here. So let me go ahead and get the share screen going on. And I'll go ahead and pull that up. And what do you think this card says? Something is like, what, uh, wait a second. Because you've got something like the kind of top. I can't read the. Oh, yeah. Fizz dub <laughs> <laughs> like humbug. I feel like it might be humbug. Fizz. Fizz. <laughs> something what? that I got it. Should have been doing at your show. Yeah. Yes. And you do this, you do this when you go clubbing. You might see this while you're clubbing. I don't know if I. Okay. So what's the. Oh, this is the hint that I might see where I go clubbing. Yes. yes. <laughs> <It's>, um... <laughs> You know, uh-huh. when you're you're rocking out in that violin yeah, yeah. and you're it, just, you know. It's the fraternity bro official dance move. <laughs> so uh, it, I don't know. Fist pretty much, I'll give you a hint. You take your hand and you kind of go like this. Like you're what? punching the air. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I don't know what it is at all. Maybe I don't know it. <laughs> you, you, uh, Tom, uh, what about Tom? Tom, you, you know what it is? Oh, yeah. What is it? It's fist pumping. It's fist pumping, fist yes. Yes. Pumping. Fist pumping. So h- how did fizz dub get to be fist? Well, when uh, a lot of these, it's like you got to think about it like you're you're completely trash. Fist dub, fist dumping. Fist dump, fist dumping. You know. And like, so a lot of times what I like to tell a lot of guests is say it fast. Say it fast and kind of listen to yourself as you say it because you said fist a half dozen times and i was like oh man she's got the fist part but a lot of times yeah. people don't realize that they say what it actually is until <laughs> you know later on so that's right. the first one so we're going to go ahead and do that one and then we're going to have another one for you so let me <laughs> go ahead and get this ready and i'll get this all pulled up and uh, all that mm. stuff so here's this one and then once this stuff goes away i'll full screen this and uh, what do you think that says? Is there a word at the top above the Yank solo? Oh. 
Yeah, you're uh, cutting off. Oh, is it is it cutting off? Okay, so we will discard that one. I did not realize that it was cut off at the top like that. So we, something we, solo, maybe I don't know. Like, <laughs> so, anyways, that one, what that would have been is that one was actually flying solo. So flying solo was that one. And then let me just she make did sure. Actually start to get the end there. When she let me make sure that this one is not summoning. cut off. So for some reason, I don't know. Jesus, right? Yeah, I don't know why they're. <laughs> I don't know why they're cut off like that. Like I don't, I don't understand. You know what? I think I had too much to drink before we did this. So, but anyways, so that that we'll just do that one round because the other ones are kind of cut off. Actually, you know what? This is what I can do. I can just do it old school. Can you see that? Yeah, of course I can. Okay. All right. What do you think that says? Something I do often. <laughs> Wake, wake. Oh, oh, you got the first part. Wakey, wakey, wake. You're, up, you're off to a good start. That's one of the hints. Wake, and I ain't talking about ovens, baby. <laughs> wake, 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 wake. But it's something you can do with an oven, and it's the California way to start your day. Or maybe Colorado. It's something that you do in an oven, so it's like a... Something that you eat for breakfast. <laughs> or you you basically do this with a cake. Bake. Bake. Oh. So. Wake up. So put it together. And then you make a cake. <laughs> make a cake or something. No. <laughs> wait, wait, well, you got the first word right, which was wake. So wake is the first word. I so, don't have a strand that is yeah. has to do with cake. <laughs> Ice cream cake. Yep. Wake. Cake. Wait. <laughs> What's wake got to do with a cake? <laughs> it's when you uh, put the oven, put, put the it, cake in the it, oven. Put it this way: things are being legalized all throughout wait, the United wait. States, and a lot of times people say when you do too much of this one thing, you're something. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst was thing. That was the worst hit ever. <laughs> that, was, that was terrible, Ray. I was thinking, I was like, what are you Oh, sorry. About? I'm sure well, Tom sounds like, it sounds that. like marijuana, but like, like oh, it's, yes, it's, yes, it's yes, not. It has, well, yeah. this guy is making about marijuana. I'm, well, I kind of was too. But the cake goes into the oven. What are you doing? You're baking it. Yes. So, wake. Wake bake. And wake bake. Wake and it. bake. <laughs> wake <laughs> bake. What's wake what and bake? You bake. You wake up and you smoke okay. weed. So wake so, and bake. So I. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. <laughs> I am very much. That is so. very very familiar. So when you with wake you up mean? in the morning, you take a bong rip. And then you just go on about your day. It's almost with Matt. It's kind of like you ever see the Tostitos <laughs> pizza roll commercials when it's like in the morning, in the evening, even at supper time. When you have Tostitos pizza roll, you can eat pizza roll anytime. That's Matt with a bone with, with, <laughs> with edibles. My, my my favorite part of that whole thing was Ray's hint of sometimes some things are doing some stuff. <laughs> And then you're something. <laughs> like, what the fuck? It's like, I, I'm like, Ray, dude, I could not see you as a dad, like, explaining to your child, like, it's like, dude, bro, just tell him. I, I <laughs> tell felt... him you flush the goldfish down the toilet, bro. <laughs> just you're, do it. I'm sorry, Johnny, your goldfish is dead. Bro, take I, goldfish I, is I dead. Felt... Take the band aid off, Ray. <laughs> Take I it. felt high listening to that explanation. <laughs> I was like, what in the fuck? That guy that was angry at, at, Daisy show. He was really putting a silencer on his gun so he could just shoot me in between the eyes because of the description I just gave. Yes. And of course, this is this is our Ode to Humanity segment. So we can't have Ode to Humanity without Cards Against Humanity. Have you ever played gar- Cards Against Humanity? Hey guys, but before we jump into this, I'm gonna hop off because I got to be at a show in about right, man. 35 no minutes. Problem. But uh, we'll see you, Tom. Up, up. It was nice meeting you, Daisy, and I'll see you awesome. guys on the next one. All right, see ya. All right, have, have a good one, guys. All right, so Daisy, pretty hey, much. Hey, do you play? Do you play like videos of music, like my music or anything? Do you play some music on this show or no? Um, we we do the audio version, 
Oh, Normally nice. the audio version, I can edit anything in. Oh, so good. if you want to send us some music, we'll definitely Ooh. throw it in on the audio version. Hell yeah. And all that. Like right now, we just we don't have the technology. Like, I mean, I wish I had the technology and all that to do that. But you know, things have been picking up a lot on our YouTube. You know, actually, shout out to all the fans. This month we've done eleven thousand views on YouTube. So Thank you awesome. to everybody at home that, you know, follows Happy Hour Podcast. Of course, we have a little bit of everything. You know, one week we could have an adult film star, and the next week we could have a wrestler. The next week we could have a musician. We we just, we like to have everybody. I could, I could share a like a video or something, you know, just share my screen and like do a, do oh, a yeah. four minute video yeah. or something. Oh, that would yeah. Be yeah that would, that'd be real cool. Yeah. And so have you then ever. It, but then you got to smash the violin. <laughs> yeah, yes. You have to smash the no, violin. Not, not your yes. good one. Yeah, but, not, you know. not, not, the, not, not. <laughs> Not your baby that's like you know not the your old one not yeah. your dinosaur like, violin well, but, yeah, yeah the violin when you said it had a crack in it like if that thing broke would you just literally sit there and clench it in your head just like, nah! <laughs> like yeah. she would go down with yeah. it like the titanic <laughs> and just <laughs> and uh so cards against humanity so have you ever played it or heard of it before no, not played it or heard of it. Okay, so I'm going to warn you so, that it is a very vulgar game. So it, it, but, can be. it, it, can it be. very much can be. So it's what we're basically gonna do, just like uh, ad lib. Yeah, it, it's never played ad, you yeah, know, well, ad libs. Well, we're, we're going to read off a face card. And then since we can't give you the answer cards live, we normally have our guests choose a number that will randomly, it's kind of like Cards Against Humanity roulette. You choose a random number that will answer those cards. And if you don't like your answer, you get one rebuttal. And then afterwards, we have you ad lib the card for answers. So the first one is we never, we never did find blank along the way. We sure learned a lot about blank. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you two numbers, one through six, Choose two numbers that you think can answer those blanks. Randomly. And basically, what, what's it supposed to be? Is it supposed to be a quote from something famous? No, um, it's just it's just a really messed up card game that that somebody somebody like us created. And yeah, so it's, it's basically never did we find blank, but along the way we sure learned a lot about blank. And normally, what will happen is you have ten cards, and then you choose two cards. Everybody chooses two cards. Somebody selects those. That's hard to do live. So we, what we did is a fun twist. We had people just choose random numbers to answer those cards. And whatever answer they get, they're like, oh, my God, like when they answer those numbers. So two numbers that come off of your head between one through six that feel like lucky numbers to you that may be able to answer that. Okay. The first number is number three. Number and the three, second number right. is number five. Number three and number five. All right. So... Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Never did we find the sound of my roommate masturbating, but along the way, we sure learned a lot about Uggs, leggings, and a North Face jacket. <laughs> now, are you satisfied with those, or like do you want to do a rebuttal and choose something else? Um, I could have a rebuttal on the first one. Rebuttal on the first one. Okay. My guess well, was, I guess. <laughs> so what was it? So she chose two. She, she, no, she and chose one and five. One and five. No, I, oh, chose, right. I chose three and five. Three so and five. Right. Chose, so three. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you are an idiot. So I three, can't count. Three and five are out. So now. Let's choose one between, instead. One and four. One and four is now a number that you're going to choose for the cards that are remaining. <laughs> so what do you think? One, mm. one, oh, oh, four. Oh, I'm going to go for one. I'm going one, for one. All right. Okay. So. Now the first card, now the card said, we never did find blank. No. So I, no, no. now now it's, we. Ne <laughs> I've Jesus. had too much to drink. <laughs> we never did find watching the show Frasier and feeling the emotion of pleasure. But along the way, we sure learned a lot about Uggs, leggings, and a North Face jacket. So... <laughs> That's fine. I like some, it either way. So, yeah, some I of the like answers you could have had we're sitting atop a pile of tuna, like some kind of queen, a girl who is interesting that has blue hair, or preteens. So those are some of the other answers you could have had. Now, if you could ad lib that, what two words would you insert into that that you could think off the top of your head? So only a word, because you had a whole phrase before, but it's only one word? <laughs> uh, two words. 
So, so I never could find blah blah, but I did learn a lot about blah blah on the way. Yeah, yes. yeah. I never could find. Here, I, if you want, I can hold it up for you, so you can see it and insert your words. You could have done that to begin with. Sir. <laughs> we never did find. I mean, I would go for like totally my kind of stuff. Never did find the answer to life, but along the way, we sure learned a lot about. Um. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we sure learned a lot about having fun along the way. Ah, there you go. There you That's go. The kind of stuff if, I would I, be like. <laughs> if I could do one, it'd be like we never did find the mafia, but along the way, we learned a lot about an angry Italian at at, at Daisy's show. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's good. That's good. And then we're gonna do another one. So another one, unfortunately, it is another two answer one. So Jeez, dude. this one, it says, dear sir. And now mind you, this game is really sick and twisted. So we like to play this with our guests because a lot of our guests are just so shocked at the answer. So, um, <laughs> and I know this one from picky, like I randomly draw the cards out of the box. So I remember from drawing these earlier, dear sir, and madam, we regret to inform that the, that we were, uh, dear uh, the, the, sir. The, the, Today, you, want to read, you read it. You okay. read this one. <laughs> <laughs> Dear sir or madam, we regret to inform you that the office of blank has denied your request for blank. So you got one, two, three, four. Is that six? Yes. Six again. Okay. This time I'm going to go for the first one, number six, and the second one, number one. So one and six. One and six. Yeah, one and six. All right. Okay, so we're going to go with, dear sir or madam, we regret to inform you that the office of driving into a tornado, tornado <laughs> to learn about tornadoes has denied your request for Hot Pockets. <laughs> I mean, that's totally random. But yes, I mean. yes. Now, are you satisfied with those? Or no, do I want to you... do a rebuttal. I want to do another one. All right. You, you want to do another one for mm -hmm. both or just one of them? I want to do another one for the second one. And second I want to do number right. three. So now you have one through four since two cards yeah. are eliminated. I want number three. Number three. Okay. Which one is that, Ray? That, that is this one, the third one, one over. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, dear sir or madam, we regret to inform you that the Office of Driving into a Tornado to Learn About Tornadoes has denied your request for going to college and becoming a new person who has sex. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, sure. And and <laughs> thank and that that's our Ode to Humanity segment. Thank you for taking part in our Ode to Humanity segment. We love to play that with our, you know, all of our guests. And go out. I don't know if you like to play games with, you know, friends and family. Go out and pick this up. Like if you guys are done with a show and you're having a couple of drinks and you're right. just chilling out pick up incoherent pick up cards against humanity yeah, it's a, you will laugh for hours it is I a bit longer but i think there's yeah. ones oh, that are a oh, bit yeah. lighter though, yeah, I think. yeah there are yeah definitely there was a yeah. range right there but a nice, it, it'd be a nice little like tour bus type yeah you know and right. of which, just when, to make things go by when you guys try it like she's sitting there thinking to herself right now what the, what did i get myself into like what, <laughs> what why did i agree to do this like what but no i mean that's the thing like we like to have fun i mean that's the thing like you know a lot of people they'll have a script in front of them they're very you know hey how did you get started all that us yeah I, I, you know it's the happy hour podcast i look at right. it as if we were sitting down having drinks at the bar that's you know, how it is what would I be asking you? You right. know, what, what will we be doing? And speaking of a tour bus, when you guys travel, how do you yeah. guys mainly travel? Do you guys have yeah. your own tour bus? Uh, we don't have our, uh, not exactly. We Through China, we had a kind of coach, uh, okay. but we, 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 you know, I'm only, only traveling with a small group. Like in okay. China, we travel with five people. Um, you know, I'm traveling with somewhere between five to six people or no, normally. So um honestly it's like a lot of you know flying flights and trains and coaches and stuff i mean we we travel nicely um but we i've never traveled on a tour bus <laughs> and oh, yeah. uh, what we're gonna do i you came with us a little bit early and we appreciate it we're gonna go ahead and let you get ready to get out of here of course where can everybody find you in case yeah i'd like to play music? can i play like a little bit of music so people yeah know yeah go ahead for anybody so, watching, live so watching on I'm, youtube 
I'm just going to quickly bring up like uh, a little YouTube clip. Yeah, that's exactly okay. what I'll do. Yeah. yeah. This is this is cool because this is um I'll just get it ready and then we can like bring it bring it right up. Okay, here it is. Cool. Oops, sorry. I'm just going to share the screen in a minute. Okay. Now, is this, is this the show where the where the Italian man <laughs> was was at the show? Yeah, no, I don't have I don't have a video of that show. But um, can I share my screen? You, is it like? Is yeah, it yeah. Like I, I just show. I just set it to where anybody can share. Perfect. There you go. Okay, so here there we are. Go. So why can I not see anything though? Oh, there we go. Okay, good. There we go. So this is uh, the. This is the show we just played. Is this, this is the reggae version of Vivaldi. <laughs> oh, that's, that's real cool. How often have you guys been to Baltimore? Have you guys ever been to Baltimore? I know, yeah. I like that. I watch all Peaky Blinders. You're really into it. Like, you can talk. I'm off of you. You're welcome, Blues. And then this is music that I write. battling he's doing his thing and you doing his thing that's cool i used to play the trumpet for you <laughs> <laughs> everything together and yeah. you know just flowing together with you know whoever's singing whoever's you know playing the violins whoever's you know doing the horns the trumpets you know whatever that's insane right. to keep the and i mean i do pro wrestling like a lot of people are like man i could never do that but that like that's 
that's that's a show you know put together that's like a well-oiled machine and and just like with the other reviews that they were like uh yeah Yeah. just like the energy and and most of all most you guys look like you're having so much fun so much fun and it's really interesting i don't know if you know it well you must notice there's quite a lot of students on that stage so basically i run a music mentorship foundation because i never came to the states thinking i'm going to work with kids like not in the wildest dreams but it started happening that, you know, because I live in this smaller town now, north of New York City, uh, there's a community here. And when I first came here, like I played a concert there and they're like, there's this amazing violinist living in our community. But <laughs> there was no opportunity for the kids to learn like a string instrument oh, really? in the schools. So yeah. the, all these mums came up and said, can you help us? You know, we want to start a strings program in the schools for our kids. I was like, oh, yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> but, you know, I basically, I knew that I need to get kids excited about the idea of learning a violin. I mean, why otherwise? So I basically gave them free tickets to come to concerts like that. Nice. And they were like, oh, my God, we want to learn. So then yeah. now, we, <laughs> now we've got hundreds of kids playing instruments in our school. That's schools. cool. Yeah. Is, that, is yeah. it all You're... local kids or, or do they try? Local to kids. Them? all local kids so basically now the kids are good enough and we have them in the concert with us and we got like so these are school choirs and when they have that they will never forget that experience they're on the stage they got a thousand people cheering their asses off for them they got the lights they got they're surrounded by the quality of world-class musicians it's like maybe these are so talented and honestly, you're so talented. I mean, I took music in school. I could never get past the recorder. Like that's so, you know, just the talent of being able to do something like that. And I think about it all the time. Like I get sad. Like, I couldn't even play a recorder. Meanwhile, like, you know, you guys are doing big, amazing shows like that. I, I mean, it, it's just really like, it's great. Have you ever, we have a lot of beautiful theaters here in Baltimore. Have you played? Here no, I want to come. I've, I just um, literally just got a new booking agent like for the US. So I'm going to start sending her some materials. <laughs> I meant to do it a couple days ago. But anyway, I'll start sending her some materials so we can start touring. I would love to tour the, the US. I'm the Baltimore. You know? Baltimore has some of the best, yeah. best bands for anything in the world. Baseball, wrestling, whatever. We're very compassionate. It is called Charm City. Now, granted, when you get into Baltimore... You might see a lot of crackheads and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, try not to go many places at night because Baltimore is one of the worst crime and murder rates in the country. But, <laughs> That's okay. but other than that, Baltimore it, is great. We take your entertainment yeah. very serious. Yeah. Maryland you know is what I really, I really believe, though, that, you know, in life we do attract like certain energies. And yeah. I've, I've been, I mean, I, I'm doing a concert at the Pyramids uh, on the 4th of November in Egypt. Like I've been to oh. Egypt. I've been to, you know, That's third world cool. countries. I've been to dangerous war zones. I'm, you know, if you go with like the energy of love, you will attract because everybody oh. has love in them, you know. Yeah. So you'll just. Everybody just wants to relax and have a good time, especially yeah. after what we just got out of with COVID and all that. Like yeah. people want to go they want to have a good time they want to yeah. hear good music yes. they want to see a good show i mean this this show was a byproduct of the pandemic we didn't really have much going on yeah i had retired from wrestling and i was like hey. screw it let's just do it in june yeah. of 2020 this started and you know we haven't looked back and we've had all kinds of great guests you know we appreciate you coming on thank you, you. Know, thank and you so much for crazy, having me. uh where can everybody find you if they yeah daisy you, daisy juggling yeah, basically like Daisy Jopling. So it's D-A-I-S-Y-J-O-P-L-I-N-G. So it's kind of like Janice, but with the G at the end. Um, everywhere. So, you know, I've got all the social media, Twitter, so you know, Instagram, Facebook, uh, my website, LinkedIn, you know, TikTok, the whole thing. Um, and yeah, just just please sign up for my YouTube channel. You know what it's like. Like the more people we get following us, it actually, you know, it really makes a difference. So just subscribe makes and like it. Makes it more visible. Yeah, it get it allows us to play more concerts basically allows us to like bring the work that we do we're going to start working with students actually also in egypt so we're going to start doing this thing of like raising money so that there is more money for music education everywhere we go we raise money for the school's programs for their music programs so you know we're really into like supporting that because it's amazing for kids if they want to you know if they're attracted to that like to have an amazing teacher and to get the opportunity to play in shows like this and it, you just express themselves you know so many oh, yeah. kids are like look i, I could take out my instrument I'm, I'm playing on my instrument and and it calms me down you know i mean i feel that <laughs> if i don't practice like people are like you know you still practice i'm like i have to practice it's my therapy you know when i play that violin 
calms me down. Now, what what if there what if there's any you know anybody out there, and I, I hope anybody under the age of eighteen is not watching this pro because we have a lot of questionable content. But if there is anybody out there like yeah. that wants to reach out to you and kind of do what you do with some of the other younger people, yeah, that want to learn and play on stage, I guess can they reach out on your website? Or- yeah, yeah, the actual website for the foundation because it's called the Daisy Jopling Music Mentorship Foundation. But we've got uh, Daisy Jopling Foundation org, so the same Daisy J O P L I N G, and then Foundation org, and you can just write to. Uh, office at daisyjopplingfoundation.org and that's like goes straight to our administrative you know people on the foundation so um if you want to reach out and yeah you know awesome awesome get us to come and do some whatever concerts (laughs) or work with your kids yeah let's do it you know sweet and we appreciate it daisy we're gonna go ahead let you get ready to get out of here can you hang out for like one or two seconds once we're done once the live feed wraps up all right cool so what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and wrap up here on youtube live of course we're gonna be back here again live on june 3rd and our featured guest is justice jardin justice jardin she travels around and she does a lot of on stage ex- like exotic shows so you know that that that's fun within itself just hearing about that like some of those shows are phenomenal like uh, we we had someone on that she dresses up she comes out in a car and transforms like a transformer like out on the stage and so it, it, it's cool it's going to be fun talking to justice and of course you know we have a lot going on of course happy memorial day everybody go out pick up some happy hour podcast merchandise right over on our official website and uh you know of course click the subscribe button right here at the bottom of the screen subscribe to the happy hour podcast our subscriber rate has went up of course we've had eleven thousand views over the last month so thank you for everybody who tunes in each and every episode and of course also the audio listeners that are out there listening in on you know every major podcast platform we appreciate it of course i'm ray this is matt this has been the happy hour podcast and we're going to go ahead and wrap up right here on you